Welcome to Rebel Speak and Isaiah Meandering. Today we are looking at um, the first half or two thirds of Isaiah 41. And it's a, it's a powerful, just this whole, we're just gonna be reading powerful, <laughs> powerful passage upon powerful passage. And we, we, we've moved, we're, 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 we're up in history, up in history where the people need a defender from the power of Babylon. Their, their lives have been sent out, the diaspora, the sending out, they're, 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 they're spread out, they've lost their identity, they've lost their land, they've lost their understanding of themselves. And what's interesting is that the first part of Isaiah, God comes at them in terms of the covenant and what they owe. And now God's going to speak in terms of the covenant of what he promises, his own faithfulness, that this covenant, it, it's not broken. God's, they're at a time where God's faithfulness is necessary. God's salvation in their lives is necessary. God takes his covenant seriously. And, and this is what is being spoken of here in Isaiah 41. All right. Listen in silence before me. You lands beyond the sea, bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. And we're going to see this this case, this argument, okay, that God's speaking in an argument. We'll see this um, elsewhere in this chapter, okay? There's, a, there's this structure setting up a, a court case. Who has stirred up this king from the east, rightly calling him to God's service? Okay, so there's a king coming to serve the situation, to serve the circumstance. Who's called him? And there, there's this knowledge this knowledge of this king that is coming, this power that is, is vast, all right? It's the vast power on its way. Who gives this man victory over many nations and permits him to trample their kings underfoot? With his sword, he reduces armies to dust. With his bow, he scatters them like chaff before the wind. So there's one coming with great power, great authority. He chases them away and goes on safely. Where this king comes, the, 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 the powers that be are just chased off and on he goes. He's not even uh, phased, right? Not even phased by his encounter with them. And goes on safely, though he's walking over unfamiliar ground, okay? He's, he's in land he's never been in before, but it doesn't deter him. He's more than capable. Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? So there's this, this kind of, speaking of, of, of Persia, of Cyrus, of great power, but God's also speaking of God's own self. Like you are so afraid of this power that's coming, this, this power, the far ends of, the, 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 the news of Cyrus is so great, everyone's afraid. Everyone's afraid, but, but, but I'm greater. I'm greater. So it, 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 there's, a, there's a way that God is saying, no, you sh don't be afraid because I'm greater. Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? It is I, Yahweh, the first and the last. I alone am he. There's, there's only one real power over all of history. Only, only one only one God, only one storyteller, only one narrative, if you will, maker, or I don't know, conductor of the narrative. The lands beyond the sea watch in fear, the removed, remote, very vulnerable. The further away you are, the more vulnerable you are. Remote lands tremble and they mobilize for war. There's this, this power that's coming. And, and, and it's talking about this power and it's contrasting. This chapter is amazing. It's contrasting what and whom to fear. Remote lands tremble and mobilize for war. The idol makers encourage one another, saying to each other, be strong. Okay, as they hear these rumors of this descending power coming from the north, coming into their land, exerting power and authority, they turn, they start making idols. And as they're making these idols, right, these, these homemade, if you will, idols, they say to each other, be strong. And the carver encourages the goldsmith. So these aren't wooden. Um, there's a, we'll see later in Isaiah talking about wooden carved. This, these are gold. They have some value. The carver that, that's making the mold encourages the goldsmith pouring the gold and the, 
Mulder helps at the anvil. Good, they say, it's coming along fine. Now here we're gonna see here some great humor. Okay, they're telling each other, they're, they're making and they're building this thing and they're saying, that's good, that's coming along fine. Carefully, they join the parts together, then fasten the thing in place so that it won't fall over. They nail it into place. So there's just, it, it has no strength. It has no validity. And then God's going to say, okay, so here, how do people respond when powers greater than themselves are rising up? And there's this power, right, rising up. And it's this power that's going to save Israel. It's going to save them. But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, you are my servant, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. They're feeling thrown away. They're feeling forgotten. And in this moment in history where fear is as Cyrus moves forward, fear follows. And here God's speaking to God's own family. No, you are my servant, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. You feel thrown away, you're not thrown away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I, I, the one who's chosen you. Yeah, that I am your God, the one who's chosen you. I will strengthen you. You're not abandoned to the situation and circumstance. I will help you. I will hold you up with my, my, right? Victorious, ruling, my victorious right hand. See, all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. I just feel that, that, that exertion of God's capacity. The things we fear that we're certain are greater than we are. Comes a moment where God says, no, those enemies lie there confused and humiliated. It's not forever like this. Don't let anyone tell you that. It's not forever like this. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. They've known a conquering. They've known a conquering. They're a conquered people. And here God says it's, it's different. It's changing. It's shifting. You will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. In the midst of this kind of global revolution within, within this land, right? Not We say global. We see all of the globe. Global in terms of their perspective. In the midst of this global revolution you're going to know redemption and freedom. For I hold you, why? Because I, God, the God of the universe, the God of the createdness, the only God. For I hold you by your right hand, your arms, your means of strength. I, God, the victorious right-handed one, holds your right hand, your ability, your power, your somethingness, your creative abilities, I, Yahweh, your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you, though you are a lowly worm, O Jacob. And I, I, I believe this is how they feel. We've, we're nothing. We're, we're in no position of any strength or power. Right? We're, we're just a little worm with no teeth or... You know, we just like, what well, I don't know. We have no power for destruction. And there's going to be a turn on this understanding as, as, as of a worm with a, a, a toothless. I don't know. I think it's a toothless creation. And God's going to tell you, you feel like a little worm. Oh, Jacob, don't be afraid, people of Israel, for I will help you. I am Yahweh, your redeemer. This is a term. This is a familial term. This is a term that's a part of the culture where something happens to a family member and the person with the means and the obligation, right? The, the means and the obligation comes in and buys back or restores that person. And God's aligning God's self. Here they feel forgotten. Here they feel abandoned. And God's saying, I'm fully aligned with you in this moment in time. And I have the means and I have the obligation. I'm aligned with you. I'm aligned with you. I am aligned with you. I am here on your behalf. 
because my relationship with you requires that of me. My relationship to you requires that of me. I'm your God. And that's what I do. Redeemer, I'm coming and I'm restoring you rightfully because I have the means and the obligation, the capacity. I am Yahweh, your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. There's no one else. He's like, I, you and me, I'm aligned with you. You will, will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. You feel like a worm. You're going to be, you're going to have these sharp teeth that's going to cut through, cut through challenges, cut through things in the way. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of mountains. What are mountains? Obstacles, obstacles that are bigger than us. You're going to be moving in a way that's going to clear out these obstacles that feel, you know, huge in comparison to you. You have no authority. You have no power. No, I'm making you something. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of mountains. You will toss them into the air and the wind will blow them all away. A whirlwind will scatter them. And then you will rejoice in Yahweh. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. When you see who you are, when you see the power in you, when you see how I make you great, then you will rejoice in me. When the poor and needy search for water and there is none and their tongues are parched from thirst. Okay, so the poor and the needy, this is where this goes. And they're parched for thirst, then I, Yahweh, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. When you cry out in need, I'm there for you. It's my nature. It's who I am. It's what I do. I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert. Where are the people? They're in the barren desert. I am the God that responds to you. And it, I, I do believe this has something to do with who they've become. You have become a people who can receive. And everything in me has been yearning to give, and now I can give. Everything in me has been wanting to give, and now I can give. I will plant trees in the barren desert, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means. What what means? What it means that it is the Lord Yahweh who has done this. The Holy One of Israel who created it. There's a witness. My presence in your life right now is a witness. This is not God capricious. The enemy so would have us read God so poorly and so badly. There's God yearning to relate to humanity. And there's humanity in these early chapters of Isaiah just taking God for granted, mocking him. And then we just move fast through time, right? Fast through time, fast forward. Where even sometimes I'm like, oh, good, where, where are we right now? <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're under Babylon, but Babylon's about to meet Persia under Cyprus. And I, I, I sometimes this can, I, I can get these lenses kind of a little discombobulated. But here's the thing. You, your heart is in a place that I can pour all my water. I can pour all my love. I can, I can come in and walk in and set up. And, and there will be love and response and right relationship. And, and in that is salvation. In that is salvation. The goodness and the abundance of God, right? In the land of the living. That before, like, God couldn't do anything for them because their hearts were so hard and their rebellion so great. And they, they knew all the words. They, they couldn't hear the prophets. The Leviticus, the law meant nothing to them. All the sweet tenderness of the time of the wilderness, right? All the sweet tenderness of, of God wooing a people to God's self. They were above it. Nothing God could speak. There was nothing they could receive. And so God lets, right? The lets the, the northern nation fall and then the southern nation falls to Babylon and they're, they're diasporatically 
psh, diffused. And then they're, they're there, they feel like a worm. They, they, they have, like what, is this, like, what is even the meaning of this story? And there's God saying, no, the meaning of this story is that I'm your savior. The meaning of this story is that I am the God of the universe who's aligned with you. I, God, am aligned with you. I, God, am your salvation. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. And your own right hand will do glorious things. You will see victory. You will know greatness. Why? Well, here it is. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means. That it is Yahweh who has done this. You will know it and others will know it. The Holy One of Israel who created it. It's God's goodness. God's goodness that is writing the story of redemption, redeemer in the midst of your depression, your sorrow, your what's the pointness? <laughs> what's the point? What's the point? Your sense of being a worm in the midst of a geopolitical world that you have no voice, no place in. I'm giving you a voice. I'm giving you a place. And it's going to be a powerful story. And we, those of us who know the story on the other side of the cross, know how beautiful, right? This story just goes on and on. It's a beautiful story that we're joyously grateful for, joy, joyously a, a part of a story of salvation that shows the relational redemption, right? The relational redemption. God chooses a people. God works with and through that people. And God brings that people to a story of salvation through the cross. And from there, all of humanity, all of humanity is invited to the story. Be blessed.